Welcome to Bike Wale. My name is Suvil and this is the new Java 42 Bobber, company's second Bobber style motorcycle after the Perak. Now the company officials say that there are going to be more products that are going to have the Bobber styling into the future. But that's something into the future, we are not going to talk about that today. What we have here for you is a first ride review of the new 42 Bobber and we are going to talk about its styling, its design, its build quality, the uh, specifications, the feature list and most importantly its prices and its rivals. But before we go any further, make sure that you are subscribed to our channel and clicked on the bell icon to stay notified every time we upload a new video. At first glance, the 42 Bobber may look similar to the Perak, but that is not the case. This motorcycle gets some really unique styling elements. First up is the headlight that is compact in shape as compared to the Perak and that's because this is an LED unit. You would also see a 42 badge on the headlight which is a good attention to detail. Then moving back into the cockpit, now although the instrument cluster has a round shape as the Perak, this one is an all digital unit. The switchgear too has been updated and the setup has been taken from yes the motorcycles. Then there's this fuel tank. The Perak had a teardrop shaped fuel tank while this one gets recesses towards the back and this tank pad which makes it really easy to hold on to the motorcycle with your legs. Then there's this saddle. Now this is a rider only saddle that we saw on the Perak but the design on this motorcycle has been updated for more comfort. And you would notice that the tail light is no longer here but it's been positioned on the rear fender in a more conventional fashion. To top it off, Java has given this motorcycle three bold colors. What you're seeing on your screen right now is the mystic copper paint while the list also includes moonstone white and dual tone jasper red. In my opinion, the dual tone jasper red is the most stylish and appealing paint option and I wouldn't have it in any other color. All paint options get gloss black fenders on both ends. The styling is complemented by a good paint quality while the 42 badge on the headlight cover looks very neat. There weren't any rattling noises from the motorcycle while the switch gear operates with an assuring click. The USB charging case too looks of good quality. So, the 42 Bobber is an appealing motorcycle and it is one of the most stylish motorcycles in its segment. But does it perform equally well? At the heart of the motorcycle is a 334cc single cylinder liquid cooled engine that has been taken from the Perak and it makes the exact same power and torque output as the Perak. So this motor makes 30 bhp and 32.7 newton meters of peak torque. The engine works well anywhere above 3000 rpm but it starts building power above 4000 rpm. The higher revs pack a good punch. The motorcycle cruises at 80 km per hour at just 5000 rpm while 100 km comes just shy of 6000 revs with about 3000 revs still at your disposal. While there is a good amount of power at your disposal, it doesn't sound or feel very refined. The vibrations are evident right from 5000 rpm and they become more pronounced as the revs climb higher. The sound from the engine too sounds very industrial and that isn't very pleasant to experience from the rider's point of view. How's the exhaust? Before I start the motorcycle, I'll have to hop on the seat and take off the side stand to start it because that's how Java has designed its safety net. Uh, I'm going to start up the motorcycle, keep it at idle, then take it close to its mid-raves which is around uh, 5000 rpm and then take it closer to its red line which is at 9000 rpm for you to hear the exhaust note. That's at idle. Now that's close to its mid-raves which is around 6000 rpm. And that's how it sounds like near its red line. The hardware includes disc brakes on both ends that work with vibre sourced calipers to perform the anchoring tasks. The setup feels progressive but it lacks the initial bite. Still, the hardware is solid enough and it feels confidence inspiring. What doesn't feel very friendly however is how the suspension has been tuned. Java says that the setup has been tuned for sharper handling and a more pliant ride. 
The suspension feels good at low speed, say around 30 to 40 km per hour. But as the speed increases, the setup starts to feel harsher and it isn't something that would appeal to buyers who are looking for a comfortable ride quality. This setup, however, comes handy in the handling department of the motorcycle and it feels sporty while riding aggressively. The turning radius too is quite short, making it easy to filter through bumper to bumper traffic. Then there are the ergonomics. With a seat height of just 740mm, it is remarkably easy to mount the Java 42 Bobber and at 5 feet 10 inches tall, I can place both my feet flat on the ground with a comfortable bend on my knee. In terms of rider strangle, the foot pegs are relatively neutral set while the handlebar is low and what it does is it gives you a slightly sporty rider strangle offsetting some of the load from your lower back. It's also easy to move the motorcycle in parking because of the low seat height and you can easily move the motorcycle front or back. But there is one problem when moving the motorcycle when you're off it. These bar and mirrors, they tend to nudge your wrist when you're moving the motorcycle. And secondly, there is nothing at the back to grab the motorcycle when you're moving it. And the only option you have is to grab onto the seat while moving it in the parking. Then, there is a feature list that is a step up above the Java Perak. The headlight for example is LED and so are these compact blinkers and the tail light. The LCD in the cockpit is easy to read even in bright daylight although the information isn't as comprehensive and these fancy switches that come from the SD motorcycles are only usable to toggle between the trip meters and set the clock. The ABS is non-switchable and a Bluetooth module isn't available yet. But what does work in 42's favour is its headlight and it is among the best that I have tested in the recent past. The low beam has a good spread while the high beam packs a commendable throw, illuminating the road in pitch dark conditions. So should you buy it? So should you buy this motorcycle? Let's start off with the positives. The Java 42 Bobber is among the most stylish motorcycles in its price bracket. It's got good paint quality. The headlight performance is commendable and so is the switch gear quality but there is some scope for improvement and this motorcycle needs a more refined engine and a plusher ride quality. Then there is the practicality aspect. With just the rider only seat there is no provision for a pillion rider or to carry your luggage if you are planning to take it for long distance touring. Add to that this motorcycle competes in the same price range as the Royal Enfield Classic 350. How does it compare against Royal Enfield's largest selling motorcycle? My colleague Anuj Mishra has done a detailed comparison video on these two motorcycles and you can check that out on Bikewale's YouTube channel. Till next time, this is Suvil signing off.